What's up guys? My name is Marina Tolentino and I'm a real estate agent here on Oahu. And today we're going to talk about all about my experience working with military clients, why I do it, right? Number one, I'm a veteran spouse. I've been through this a couple times myself. And so I'm really going to talk to you guys about PCSing today. The most common questions I get from my clients who are moving to and from Hawaii and kind of the advice you need to know if you're going through the process yourself. So this is my YouTube channel. Be sure to just subscribe and hit the like button if you want to see more. There's going to be a whole video series specifically about PCSing to Oahu and I'm here to help. All right, so I recently did a mastermind panel with a bunch of agents who are professionals at working with military. They're military spouses or they recently left the military and so they have that experience PCSing. And our panel was for real estate agents in our organization to kind of prepare our agents how to work with them. If they're a new agent, what are the questions you need to ask? How do you need to prepare yourself? I'm a true believer, like if you're a new agent and you don't have experience with military or you haven't PCS before, it's kind of hard to relate to us. We've been through the trenches. We've had to move across the country, across the ocean. And so if you don't have any relationship with that, it can be kind of difficult. So the first question that we had asked our agents is what is it with your own personal experience that has prepared you to help military clients? And for me, it's I've done it, like I just said. So when I first met my husband, he was with the Coast Guard stationed in Guam. I met him on the beach, go figure. And um, he was there for three years. He had to finish his three years. I was only there for a summer. Long story short, we fell in love, but I had to finish my two years of college at WSU. And so we dated two years long distance. And then when he left Guam, he got stationed in Alameda, California. So I moved down from Washington to California. I helped him with his PCS over. And at that time, it was just one truck that we were moving and no pets, no kids. It was fairly simple. And he did it all on his own for the most part. I just joined the party. But then fast forward another three years and we got PCS down to San Diego, which Alameda to San Diego isn't the farthest, but it still includes household goods. At this time we had a puppy and we were able to drive everything down. But I mean, it's still a process and just getting through the ropes and learning that situation. It takes a couple reps before you really get confident in the process. Then fast forward, San Diego we had our son at that time so we had a one-year-old and now our dog was two years old and we're moving two vehicles from San Diego over to Hawaii this was the first time that I had done it across the ocean and I can say it was a totally different experience and it doesn't help that we decided to move within two weeks he had hit his eight-year mark in the Coast Guard and decided you know what we're not gonna stay in another like past 12 years so he wasn't gonna retire with the Coast Guard so we decided to exit and that means we were getting shipped back to his home of record which is Hawaii and so within two weeks we Figured it all out really fast and we moved over here. But I say that in saying that I just, I have the experience and I have the emotional intel to realize the stresses that you guys have to go through as military. And so it really puts me in your shoes and I'm able to connect with the stresses. I'm able to be proactive in helping service you throughout that real estate transaction. And so that's the biggest thing. So the next question that I asked our panel is what are your go-to questions when it comes to working with a military buyer? And so really it comes down to interviewing you to find out where you are, where you wanna be and how do I get you there in between? So I'm gonna wanna ask your timeline. I'm gonna ask, what's your BAH? Have you come up with a housing plan? Do you have pets? Do you have vehicles you need to ship? I'm really just establishing everything that I kind of recap, but so that I can help customize your scenario to be the smoothest it can be. And so I'm wanting to know if you've been to Hawaii before because a lot of people haven't. I'm wanting to know if you have any experience with the types of houses that we have. Are you familiar with jealousy windows? There's a couple of things really unique to Hawaii that you don't have to deal with on the mainland. And so I'm just trying to get a gauge of your experience with our island and also just housing and renting versus buying in general. Those are the biggest questions. And then that question of working with buyers automatically led into well what are the questions you ask sellers right so let's say you've been here on Oahu for three years and you're ready to PCS off island what are the questions I'm gonna ask you as a seller well first of all I need your timeline when do you have to be off island we're gonna try to work as soon as advanced to kind of establish that timeline and reverse engineer it we're gonna run numbers that's really important right owned it for a couple of years you have some good equity built into it but what's your payoff amount versus what could it potentially sell for right we're really trying to make sure it makes sense for you to sell and you're being able to sell profitably or we're looking at the rental cops right like let's say it's a break even or you might even lose money if you try to sell right now for whatever reason. I'm going to want to make sure that you're able to rent it for a profit. And so that's running the numbers with the property manager. We're looking at the comps. We're talking to a CPA. We're doing all the footwork in advance to make sure that you are confident about your decision to leave the island and what to do with this property. All right. The next question that we asked our panel of agents was how far in advance should people reach out to you? And they all said unanimously as soon as possible <laughs> because we cannot help you unless we know that you exist. OK, so if you haven't reached out to a realtor and you're trying to do all this research on your own, which I know you are because you're very smart and YouTube isn't a great resource for you. You're 
you're gonna wanna reach out to somebody who's boots on the ground, who does this all the time, who has experience with PCSing so that they can help prepare you. If you're waiting to the last minute and you're on island and then you're reaching out to a realtor and you're like, I need a house in like 10 days, can you help me? Well, sure, I'll help you, but let's set some expectations. It's gonna take a while. Even if we get you pre-approved, let's say in like 48 hours, and then we go on showings for a week, it could take potentially 45 to 60 days until you actually have keys in hand. So again, the more you plan in advance, the better we'll all be. We're not gonna be frantic and you'll just have a lot more confidence with your decisions. The next one's a fun one. So the question we asked our panelists, what are some common obstacles that you have to help your military clients overcome? And I can tell you there's a lot. A lot of it is mindset, right? But then just experience. So if you are coming from a mainland state that's pretty relatively inexpensive, let's say Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, Idaho, I don't know, wherever in the mainland that the cost of living is pretty low, it's gonna be a sticker shock when you get to Hawaii. So we're constantly having to educate. You are paying for paradise, right? But your BH compensates for that. You have a much higher BH in Hawaii. Your VA loan right is unlimited. Basically, as long as you have the income to support it, you can get a jumbo loan. You can get a million dollar loan, no problem. Especially if you have dual income. If your spouse works or if you're dual military, you can really afford a lot in Hawaii. It's more so if you're comfortable with the payment. That's the biggest thing. Another common obstacle we're constantly facing is what if you get deployed, right? Or how do you buy a house virtually? We do that all the time. It's not a big obstacle anymore because we're so used to it. But for a lot of clients, I've helped one who was stationed in Bahrain. She was Coast Guard moving to here and she had to be in Honolulu. And so we did the whole process virtually. We literally Zoomed each other, did Google Drive with photo videos, and I was able to show her condos aplenty, and she could make a really good decision of what she wanted to do so that when she got here, I had keys waiting for her. I was able to say, here you go, do your two week quarantine, because this is the time of COVID, at the Surf Jack Hotel with your dog, you'll be set, and then we're gonna get you keys in into your condo with no problem. And so that just saved so much stress on her behalf. She found a condo that she loved, it was a really smart buy for her, and she was able to do it all seamlessly from a distance, and that's the best part. So another common obstacle I'm constantly faced, and this is especially because I do the newcomers brief on base, we have a lot of single guys who say, I wanna buy a house, how can I do that? And you're 22 and you're single. Well, guess what, buddy? I love you, but you're gonna be in the barracks. And so it's just, again, education and knowing like, well, your command is gonna want you to stay in the barracks because they don't trust you. You're too young <laughs> and you're not financially mature enough yet to have a house. But that doesn't mean we can't educate you. We can still set you up with a rental search if for some reason the barracks are undergoing renovation, which just happened recently, where they didn't have enough rooms available. And so they're telling these guys, you need to find a rental temporarily, but then you're gonna have to move on base once the renovation's done. So there's always a few hurdles here and there that we're trying to get over, but number one, it's just knowing you have options and knowing what questions to ask. I think everybody loves the idea of using the VA, VA home loan and getting a home, but you've gotta be financially responsible to do it. So that's a big one. All right, so another hurdle that I face a lot of the time with my clients is map orientation. They're just unfamiliar with the island of Oahu in general. And so we're doing a lot of education about neighborhoods. What's cool about Oahu is we do have a military branch, or I should say base for every branch of the military. And that means 10 bases. We have a lot of bases, which means you could be stationed somewhere like sporadic throughout the island, depending where you're gonna be. But then knowing where to find a house on island is gonna be really important. A big part of my job is making sure that you have a really good quality of life and that accounts for traffic, right? So just because we're on an island doesn't mean that it's on island time and everything is 35 miles per hour around the island with Jeep Wranglers with the roof off. We have six lane freeways. We have a town that has major traffic. It's actually like number three in the nation, I think, for traffic. When you look at New York and LA, we're up there. So for me specifically, like I live in Y and I live in the furthest west you can go. I know if I need to go into town, what should take 45 minutes can take two hours during those rush hour times. So if I need to be in town by 9 a.m., I'm either leaving at 6.30 and I'm gonna park in a parking lot and just chill for a second or I'm gonna try to leave after and then if I'm in town in the afternoon I know I need to leave town by 3 p.m. at the absolute latest and even then by 3 I'm gonna be hitting a little bit of a, a sticky ride home just because it's a lot of people on a little rock okay another point real quick about location so one of the biggest tips I always give to our military PCSers is that we call this investment belt and so if we look at the map of Oahu and hopefully my editors will throw up a fancy map right now we've got Mililani at the very top and we're going over to Kapolei Eva Beach area and then over to Pearl City Iea that triangle is what we call our investment belt and so typically anywhere within that triangle you're gonna have a 30 minute commute or less to base you're gonna have a lot of affordability in the sense of your BH can actually afford you something within that zone and hopefully there's more inventory so that just means there's a lot of condo complexes, like two-story walk-ups, 
There's a good variety of single family homes versus if you're gonna try to buy in Honolulu, you're gonna deal with a lot more traffic. It's gonna be a premium because it's an, a really urban center. And then if you try to go Kailua, Kaneohe, it's just you're paying a premium, right? Because it's Kailua, Kaneohe. It's the views, it's the ocean. Everything is just a little bit more expensive. So if you can stick to that triangle belt, you'll be a lot wiser and a lot easier time to buy and sell in that area. I think I could go a lot deeper into this whole panel mastermind session that we had with our agents. But to wrap this up, I think the last thing I wanna say is you need to have a good local VA vendor, okay? A lender, I should say, not vendor. If you are looking for a lender and you are thinking, uh, oh, auto default, I'll just go with USAA or Navy Federal Credit Union or Rocket Mortgage or whatever it is, realize Hawaii is a very different animal and we are looking for people who are local. We are looking to support local and we need Hawaii time communication, that's the biggest thing. So when I have a Navy Fed pre-approval, I already know, oh boy, communication is gonna be a little bit hard. They usually tend to take longer. They're not as responsive, they're on mainland hours. And a lot of the times mid escrow, which is not what you wanna do, I have to switch to one of my reliable lenders and close the deal because Navy Fed has just dropped it off. And that's the same story with a lot of these big mainland banks or any like, bigger branch of bank. If you're trying to go with Chase or Bank of America or here Bank of Hawaii or First Hawaiian Bank, it just takes longer because it's a big corporate beast versus if you're working with someone smaller, local, reliable. I mean, we're text messaging back and forth and really the lender is a person on your team that's like part of your Avengers, you know? Like we really need to be on one team, super communicative so that you know all about your loan, first of all. You wanna run numbers for every property that you really like. And number two, that the agent and that lender can communicate without a hitch. We can make sure the ball is rolling smoothly. I have a deal right now with the lender and I'm not gonna say names, but let's just say there's a breakdown in communication. I have done everything on my part Title has done everything on their part. The buyers have done everything on their part, but we're being delayed a week because there's a lack of communication on their side. They're just not responding. Or they're taking 48 hours to respond to an email and they're not responding to my voicemails. So that's the kind of stuff we wanna avoid. All right, so if the lender communication breaks down and you're like, oh my gosh, they're just not responding, what do we do? I mean, a couple of options. One is we cancel and you default on your escrow, you know? You don't get that earnest deposit back. Or two, we hopefully do a 911 emergency call to one of my lenders and we say, dude, like help us out here. This is the situation. Like we've done everything on our part, but this lender cannot freaking close the deal. So they rescue you, we hopefully initiate this. We're still gonna be delayed a couple, like a week or two probably, but my guys are really good. And so that's where it's like, sure you can take your shot with a mainland lender who's doing a pre-qualification online, but my job is to make sure that you are prepared so that we don't have this situation. I get it, everybody has their own preference and lenders will promise like a really intriguing interest rate, which right now interest rates are all the buzz, right? That's the clickbait headlines, but is it really true? Is it accurate? Have they actually looked at your financial documents or did you just fill out a form and get pre-qualified? If you did not submit any documents, bank statements, LES, all that stuff, it's just hearsay at this point. They really need to go through, pull an actual credit report, look at your income, look at your debt to income ratio and talk you through it. And that's what we do. We really wanna set you up for success. So with that being said, we'll wrap this up. This is a good one. Like I said, I could talk for an hour about this. This is what I do. I'm really passionate about helping our military clients PCS. So be sure to subscribe. I've got multiple videos coming. Hit that like button and comment with your questions. I would be happy to make specific videos answering your questions or just schedule a time to talk to me and we can get through all of it. So with that being said, I'll talk to you soon. See ya.